Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking and subscribing the channel is free and easy, and it helps me out a lot. If you want to go a little farther with your support, I have Patreon and YouTube membership available, which includes access to the Boston Roll Discord server, early access to things I'm working on, sideboard plans, cards I'm buying, you could have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use the YouTube membership option, you get sweet, unique YouTube badges and emotes for the channel. If you want to play what I'm playing, you can use the code Boston Roll to support my channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com. And if you're playing on Magic Online, a CardHoarder.com loan account can let you play any deck anytime. If you want to wear your support, there is Boston Roll merch available. All of these links are in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's go play some Magic. We're about halfway through the video, so let me just remind you that if you like this deck and you want to try it out, you can use the code Boston Roll to support the channel while you shop for cards at TCGPlayer.com, and you can play any deck anytime with CardHoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. These links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. Welcome to another Boston Roll video. Today I'm playing Legacy, and this is Green White Depths, brought to you by Patreon subscriber Chris. Chris asked me to play this deck, and I'm grateful for it because this is a huge part of Legacy. This is a popular deck, this is a powerful deck, and it's a deck that I have not played with before on the channel, and I'm pretty excited to try it. The thing that this deck is doing is making Merit Lage, basically. Like you're trying to combo with Dark Depths and Thespian Stage and attack with a 2020. The route that it takes to get there is pretty different than Green Black Depths, where Green Black is just trying to go fast as possible. Green White is kind of a Maverick deck that is also just really good at making Dark Depths. The two Sejiri Step, the four Crop Rotation, the four Elvish Reclaimer, and the four Neither Reliquary and the Sylvan Safeski. Safekeeper, those all those cards make Merit Lage or Protect it or both. And it's very good at doing that. This is a Mox Diamond deck. There's three of those to accelerate on mana. Yavamaya is a three of. That's pretty insane. I remember when Modern Horizons 2 was being previewed, people were talking about maybe playing one Yavamaya in this deck, but here we are. We're up to three at this point. Turns out that when Dark Depths can tap for mana to activate itself with Thespian Stage or copy itself with Thespian Stage, things speed up pretty quickly. And then if your Maze of Ith taps for green, good stuff. Some of the smaller synergies in the deck, Flagstones of Trocare, combos with Crop Rotation, Elvis Reclaimer, and Knight of the Reliquary, because when this dies, you search your deck for a plane to put it onto the battlefield tapped. So you sack it, it dies, you get a Savannah or a Plains. It just says Plains, not basic, so you can get Savannah. And then you also get to resolve your effect and get a different land. So there's ramp there. These creatures also are pretty good at just attacking. Like the Maverick side of the deck, Elvish Reclaimer will be a 3-4 eventually. Knight will be a 6-6, six, 7-7, six, seven, seven, etc. eventually. This is a Wasteland deck. If you have a Remnant Excavator, you could just pivot onto controlling people's mana and wasting them out of the game. There's removal in Prismatic Ending and Plow. Three Sylvan Library to keep the cup. Cards coming. The crop rotation package has Bajuka Bog, Caracas, and Maze of Ith in it, which can buy a bunch of times against a bunch of different types of decks. Out of the sideboard, that crop rotation package includes Glacial Chasm and Field of the Dead. So if you don't think you get to Merit Lage out post board versus decks, like Swords of Plowshare decks, Field of the Dead, you can do that instead. And also out of the sideboard, Choke. If you watch the channel, you know I hate Choke. I hate playing against Green White Maverick just because of Choke. I think that. The rest of what blue-white decks are doing is good against all of these cards, but it's so bad against this card specifically. And then there's just some more combo and anti-hate stuff in the sideboard. All this is pretty expected stuff. That's green-white depths. Let's get in there and see if we can make Merit Lage or be a Maverick deck or do both, because we get to do both with this deck. It's going to be fun. Let's try it out. I'm on the draw in the first round, and I have a turn one seven one library. I'm going to keep this. I don't know what I'm playing against, but I have a Swords of Plowshares, which is basically my only interaction in game one anyway. Oh god, is this a mirror? Who, who goes Forest Go in Legacy these days? Other than me. There's only one Dryad Arbor in the deck, and there's no Brainstorm. So this Zenith can't get Arbor. Which is okay. I think that means I want to... Oh, okay. I'm actually going to discard Maze of Ith. I was going to discard Arbor until I drew Maze of Ith. I can Zenith for Ramanap Excavator, if that becomes important, but I'm going to discard the land that doesn't necessarily make mana. 
Let me figure out what my opponent's doing. Probably a post deck or a mirror. Big forest go. Elves wouldn't keep a hand that doesn't have a one drop. Yeah, this is the mirror. Bummer. Okay, fine. Strong start here. Never played this matchup before. Never played this deck before. Just straight into the mirror match. Time to see what Green Sun Zenith can do here. I probably just get Reclaimer. Or I wait a turn and get Knight. But I think I should get the party started with a Reclaimer here. I want to spend my mana. I want to do stuff. I don't want to just pass the turn without plays. Ah. Give my Reclaimer protection from white. That'll show you. They have a Mox Diamond of their own now. They're now all caught up. Basically the only thing I had going for me here was that I had Mox and they didn't. But now they do. Ooh. Passing with Wasteland up. That seems like a mistake. If they don't waste me now, they're never going to. I guess they could just sit the Wasteland in play and make sure they never get hit by Merit Lage. But if I untap, I can start. I could just rotate in response to a Wasteland at any point. I'm going to play Stage, allow this thing, get it out. Leaving up Colorless Mana instead of Green means I don't even have to think about anything else. Like, it's all fine. They're not going to crop or tape for a Sajiri step in response or anything like that. Library, okay. I mean, not okay, but can't do anything about it. I'm pretty sure I should be activating this elf. There's got to be some kind of value I can get out of this. I'll figure out what it is once I'm in the deck. I don't want to put Yavimaya into play, because that helps them as well as it helps me. I could just flagstones for value. I don't hate that. Knight of the Reliquary. That's a good card. Flagstone's Plains comes into play tapped, and so does the Knight activation, or the Reclaimer activation. Oh, green, colorless, white. Here is Knight of the Reliquary. Could just attack for three with my elf, but I don't think that's good. I think I should fetch now, though. If they had a removal spell, they would have cast it by now. And I don't want them to be able to draw one and take out my elf in response to my fetch so I don't get to activate for the turn. They get their library trigger. Can I set up a win this turn? If I rotate for Savannah and Dark Depths, and then I can Knight for Wasteland, Waste Your Waste, make Merit Lage. But crop rotation shuts that down pretty hard is they can get Caracas out of their deck. Ooh. Excavator picking up Wasteland is bad for me. That's pretty strong too. Okay. They're pretty juiced up here. Now I definitely can't get Depths because they can copy it with their stage. I'm going to have to leave Knight untapped forever, basically, to always get Caracas or Wasteland. I'm going to rotate my Flagstones. Get Savannah with the Flagstones ability. And do I just get another flagstones with the reclaimer? Do I just keep shredding? I could get a second stage. I can't get depths. I'm gonna get another flagstones. It's gonna to try to stay away ahead of this Sylvan Safekeeper or the the Ramanap excavator. I guess I might as well put the which of these is actually better? Dried Arbor doesn't tap for mana. Windswept Heath is almost out of targets, but I think that's actually fine. But Dried Arbor softens the blow of a potential Bajuka Bog. I don't actually know what my plan to win this game is right now. Their Sylvan Library is going to bury me more faster than I can hurt them. And having... I have to leave my Knight untapped to find Caracas if they ever do make Merit Lage, but get Shroud, so that might not even be good enough. I have to get Wasteland to stop them from ever getting Merit Lage. That's how I have to break that up. Unless they just get Reckless with their Sylvan Library and I find a way to cheese through. I guess I could actually 
can I get Knight up to 11 and Sejiri step it through? Like, pro grain, just crunch. That line loses to Swords to Plowshares, but it's pretty good against everything else. Okay, so I'm going to go for Thespian Stage, copying Basic Forest. If they Wasteland in response, I can rotate Stage. And if they don't, I just have a Forest now that they can't Wasteland. Okay, and then activate Elf. Get the basic planes from my deck. Elf resolves. How many fetchable lands are left? There's just the one savanna left to go with this windswept teeth, so I don't want to do that. I can get wasteland here. And I can knight, sacrifice my basic planes, get another wasteland. How big is this knight? Is it there yet? 8, Wasteland is 9, 10, Fetchland is 11. I'm going to get Wasteland. I'm going to go to my turn. Please don't draw Sejiri Step. Actually, I guess it's fine if I do draw it. So 8, 9, 10, 11. This can be done. Wasteland this. Are they rotating in response? It's mostly fine if they are. Land for turn. Wasteland Savannah also. Floating another mana. Move into beginning of combat. I'd feel a lot better without this Mox Diamond in play, but nothing I can do about that right now. If they can make Merit Lage off of a crop rotation right now, then I guess they can't because I can just Knight. But if they rotate now, then Sejiri Step can't protect from black and from green yeah that's actually a lot of trouble but i can copy their depths in response to them copying their depths and i also have a merit lage so that's not great okay i'm gonna fetch for my last savannah there is one left and then i can go one two activate this sack my basic forest got that sejiri step Pro green this thing and then attack and hope I win. All right, looks like they have a merit lage after all. So they do have the crop rotation. They have to tap out of their wasteland to copy depths, which means I can also copy depths. So I copy depths, I get a merit lage. You get a Merit Lage. Here comes Merit Lage. And then I'm going to try to plow their Lage. I know they have the Safekeeper, but that will cost them a land, cost them a resource. Okay. So I lose my Knight here. Our Merit Lages can kind of whack into each other. And I don't know if waiting makes that play better. Maybe I'm supposed to sit on one of the Wastelands. Yeah, I... Okay. That's how I fucked that up. If I I was playing around Swords to Plowshares by wasting their white sources, but they had so much white that I couldn't take them off Plow anyway with the Mox Diamond, so I should have just been sitting on Wasteland. This matchup is mostly chess, and I am not winning. Oh yeah, they get to jury step me now and name Black, and then the game is over. Okay. Yeah, I made a strategic error there. I need to just leave up my Wastelands and make sure I don't get laged. Okay. Good to know. Prismatic ending, important in the matchup. Does Endurance do anything? Oof, Chasm. And rotating for Chasm could do something. Like, I that does stop Merit Lage from connecting, unless they have Wasteland. And this deck's really good at having Wasteland, so I don't know if I can plan for that. What do you even take out? Like, maybe this matchup is just... A no sideboard situation. I think I want the ending for sure, but what do you cut? That's that seems really tricky. The safekeeper seems really important to getting the combo through. Maybe you're just not really planning to combo in the sideboard games because they also have they have a bunch of wastelands, they have a bunch of stages, they can punish you back 
for trying to combo. Yeah, maybe fewer depths. Like, you gotta pick your spot, but mostly just be a creature game. That makes some sense to me. We could bring in Force of Vigor. That could clean out, like, Sylvan Library and Mox Diamond. Do I just go down to one depth? But that is still a land with Yavimaya, but I don't really want to use it as a land because then they just get to zap it. I'm trying to figure out if I am just completely just out, just out of options if I cut all my depths or if that's just super smart. I'm going to leave one in. With all the, the different crop rotation variants in this deck, I'll find it if it's appropriate, but I don't want to just draw it and jam it into a thespian stage. Okay, this hand, again, the Dryad Arbor is here. I'm going to keep. I'm going to lead on Reclaimer because the Dryad Arbor is in my opening seven, so the Zenith for it is off the table. I kind of hope they just Mox Diamond Sylvan Library. Let me wipe face with this Force of Vigor. Please cast library. Ooh. All right, they had the plow. They're all set up over there. I don't think I'm going to force a vigor right now. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I could zenith for another. Yeah, I like zenith for another elf. Having the elf in play is going to be important one way or the other. And now I have Knight of Autumn that can zap their Mox Diamond, but they're going to get to ramp with the flagstones in between. This windswept teeth go out of them. I can. I think the second reclaimer is the play here. Let's get this in. And I have Maze of Ith to protect from any potential Dark Depths shenanigans. They're going to rotate their flagstones probably into flagstones. Yep, flagstones rotate into flagstones. Super cool trick. This being stages in play. That can also copy flagstones. You sack the original flagstones, get a planes, and then. But that doesn't actually do anything. That's not as cool as it sounds. And I gotta use my elf here. And try to keep up on cards in the graveyard and size of elf and land selection. I'm gonna get my flagstones here. Start trying to keep up. I want to keep the maze because that is a nice check to a dark depth. And I need to keep the Yavimaya if I want to keep the maze because I'm kind of hurting on mana right now. Okay, if they just make Merit Lage right now, what happens? Oh, they're getting Wasteland. Okay, yeah, they waste me off my Yavimaya right now. That's really good. Yep, completely wrecked by that. This deck is hard. This mirror is very tricky, and my opponent is playing it a lot better than I am. That was a pretty aggressive line, spending crop rotation to just mana screw me a little bit. Unless they're planning on getting over the finish line right now. Oh, they're grabbing another wasteland, so that can hit the Dryad Arbor right now. Then we're just sort of looking at each other for a minute. Right, that activated my elves. They're three fours now. Luckily, Flagstones does not get wasted very well. I think this posture is, like, pretty aggressive. It might end up working, but it is really aggressive. Let's see if this is worth a Sejiri step to them. If I attack and they make Merit Lage, I have to Maze of Ith to keep my Elf alive. And then I can't Maze of Ith on my own turn, so unfortunately don't get a good attack there. And they are representing crop rotation, or else they would have used my elf before it was... Or used their elf before I exiled it. Endurance. Okay, even worse. Yeah, Endurance would have just chewed my elves right up. I didn't bring those in in the matchup. Maybe I'm supposed to. I guess it does change the fair plan of the elves and knight pretty significantly. Maze it. And attack with Endurance and pass the turn. If I draw a land that makes mana at any point <laughs> and just start rotating those flagstones, I feel like I'm ahead. They made some aggressive wastelands to screw me, but if they, I can unscrew myself, then I'm ahead on every other resource. Okay. They're just 
in this fair deck plan now. My list only has two endurances. I don't know if that's stock or if the opponent is also or or if Chris sent me a, a list that was self seasoned. Endurancing themselves is really interesting. That's like playing for a long game versus just having a giant knight of the reliquary. A deck. How about a mana source? Uh oh. Are we in business? I hope so. so. Now I can flag stones for more flag stones. A lot of this one. You're copying my flag stones. Not on my watch. We'll get Savannah. Get the other flag stones. I think that's the right play. I could get Wasteland, but the thing I'd want to Wasteland is their stage, and stage can become flagstones in response to Wasteland. So yeah, I think I just want the backup flagstones. Notably, their Endurance did put Dried Arbor back in my deck, in case that becomes relevant with this Green Sun Zenith in hand. Bajuka Bog, you got me. That matters a little bit, because I was kind of interested in Zenithing for Ramanap Excavator that turn. But I would prefer the bog being in play than in the deck, if that's the line. Okay, Swords to Plowshares, taking out an Elf. Prismatic Ending also taking out an Elf. Pretty good stuff. Luckily, that all happened the turn after I activated Flagstones once, so now I at least have a world where I can cast spells. And Knight of the Reliquary is a really good spell. I'm going to invest in my Knight right now. That's the one that can make this game start dancing. I'm sitting on this Force of Vigor forever until they draw Sylvan Library, because that could break the game wide open. And both decks have three copies of that card in them. One of us will eventually draw one and start getting more options than the other, and I just want to have theirs covered. Zenith for one. I imagine they'll get the elf here. If they get the Sylvan Safekeeper and start trying to like aggro through my Maze of Ith by sacking lands to make Endurance Shroudy, that's a crazy line. I don't know that it's wrong, but it's definitely crazy. Unless they're just investing in Merit Lage for next turn. But with Active Knight sitting in play, Merit Lage gets a whole lot harder to get into play. Okay, I think I play Reclaimer. And Prismatic Ending. So cast Reclaimer. Ending the Safekeeper. They can save it, but it's going to cost them a land. They sack their bog. Save their thing. Sure. But still mana they're not going to have access to. I'm going to leave my Knight back to block. Because I can lock, sack planes, get a fetch land, fetch, have a 4-4. And their two Endurances and their Bajuka Bog are all accounted for right now. Perfect. Our patience was rewarded. Okay, so I'm going to Knight first. Sacrifice Basic Planes. Get. Is Yavamaya good? Yeah, Yavamaya seems pretty good, actually. Because that sets up my Maze of Ith to tap for mana. I like that. It also lets Knight sacrifice flagstones. I could also hard cast my force on my turn and save the card. That seems definitely worth doing. Okay, I'm going in on that. Bang, bang. One, two, three, four. Force of Vigor. Take out the library and the other thing. All right, that's pretty cool. They have one card in their hand. The board is stable. I could... Oh, okay. I know what I gotta do here. Knight, sacrifice flagstones. Right now, while they're tapped out of it, I wanna wasteland their thespian stage. I waste the stage right now while they can't copy a different land. So they fetched a forest in response. Are they crop rotating? Okay, that's fair. Rajuka Bog's already in the graveyard. That's the one I'd be kind of worried about here with my life total being what it is. All right, they got a fresh stage, sure. Into top deck mode you go. 
and I have Zenith for Ramanab Excavator, which will take over this game. Oh, they have a Knight of the Reliquary right off the top. That's a good one. Difference is my Bajuka Bog is still in my deck. I don't have the mana to activate my Reclaimer. Oh, there's a Plow. That's not the worst thing I've ever seen. So if I can Zenith, I think I do want to fetch. Do I want to leave that around? Now, Knight being 5-5 five, five is big enough, I think. So if I... 1, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, if I Zenith for the, the Ramanap Excavator. Is Zenith for Ramanap. Play Flagstones. Plow the Knight. I know they can save it, but they're going to have to sack a land, and I can still Wasteland them this turn. Alright, they lost that to keep their Knight. Sack Flagstones. That's my last Plains. Now I guess the question is, do I Wasteland them or Bajuka Bog them? I think I Wasteland. Just take them down to one thing. I can Bog them next turn. And then my Knight is just bigger forever. Like if they draw Wasteland right now, that sucks pretty hard. But they do have to just rip it off the top. Maze of Ith, MV MVP this game. These Endurances looked kind of good when I was mana screwed, but they've really sort of petered off here. And our opponent sees the writing on the wall here. Okay. I'm kind of proud of how that one went. That felt good. That one of Force of Vigor was insane when it actually came up. I think one is the right number of that card to play. I don't think I want Field of the Dead. Do I want the Endurances? That's a good question. It was pretty good messing with my graveyard and like changing the size of my knights or elves. Do I shave a mox and just settle in for a longer game and just bring in one endurance? Do I need Force of Vigor if I have Knight of Autumn and the Zenith for it and all the prismatic endings? Yeah, maybe Force of Vigor was a little aggressive. It did end up being good, but with all the endings and Zenith for Knight available. Don't really want to commit to that trade. And now they've seen it, so it loses some of the value. Okay, Endurances are in. Force of Vigor's out. Turn one Sylvan Library, give it to me. If I showed them how good Force of Vigor was, and they Force of Vigor me for my Sylvan Library and my Mox Diamond, that is a bad time. They have a Mox. I hope they don't have a Library. Come on. Just let me run away with this. I don't want to work that hard again. Uh-oh. They're doing something for two mana. Maybe they'll just Zenith for one. The problem with them being on the play, if we both have turn one library, they get the first look to Prismatic Ending off of library. Speaking of Prismatic Ending, I could end the elf and play my own and library next turn, or I could library now and set up for the future. I could also just library their mocks, or library their mocks, ending their mocks, but I think that's pretty bad. They left up this white mana, though. That makes me think they have swords to plowshares. Okay, I'm going to play around Wasteland where I can here and discard my Thespian stage. Jam Sylvan Library, and let's hope this investment in the future pays off. They have a stage and their own library. Okay. I think all of that is okay with me. Now I get the first dig. If I find Plow to go with my ending here. Okay. I found a whole lot of nothing, actually. So it's the jury step on top. And I guess I can put Savannah on top and just play Dried Arbor this turn. Or I should have put Dried Arbor 2 down. Right, I'll put Dried Arbor on top, because I actually do need 3 mana. I think getting rid of Sylvan Library is better than getting rid of Elf. Wipe out their library. And play my Elf. I suspect a Swords to Plowshares here, the way that they left mana up, and the way that they didn't destroy my Sylvan Library. Yep, all signs pointed down that road. If they just play Dark Depths right now, I'm dead. 
but given the matchup theory that I think is reasonable, the card's probably not even in the deck. Or one copy, just in case. Okay, so so jury step on top. I am gonna pay for I have to start working through these cards and I don't have a shuffle right now. I'll run out the arbor right now while the getting's good. And I'm not gonna sit on my plow for a second. I don't want them to be able to rotate into Sajiri Step and save their elf. I want them to commit to the flagstones and then I'll roast their elf. It's okay that they gain some extra life off of that. At least it's dead. Uh, Zenith for one. So they're re elfing. I'm looking at two fresh cards off my library. All right. Top, and I will pay for it to get a shuffle. Light that up. And now we're attacking. They have two cards in hand. Sylvan Library is the lord of this matchup. Did they find a knight also? All right, another Zenith. Treading water. I get three fresh looks. Get my Savannah. All right, Library, come on, help me out. Moto Bug, I just shuffled that away. Okay, uh, top. And do I want to go to seven? I think seven is the same as eleven. Like it's all, it's really all the same here. Okay, uh, pay for life to keep this, and then I go one, two, three. Ramanab excavator, thespian stage, elvish reclaimer. Okay, my board is really strong right now. Just need to not die somehow. Crop rotation out of them right here could put a merit lage into play. But I have my stage also, so I, maybe not. All right, Sajuri Sup on top, Thespian Stage on top. I can Zenith for what now? There is a Knight, or Knight, Knight of the Reliquaries in the deck. That's probably a good one to have access to. I'm, there is one land, one planes left in my deck. I guess I should fetch it. Just get my extra card here. If I Zenith for Knight of the Reliquary, do I lose to one, two? Yeah, okay. I have the Arbor as well that I can tap. So I'm going to Zenith for Knight of the Reliquary. I think I do lose to Crop Rotation, exactly Crop Rotation. I could get Endurance and then I just don't lose to Crop Rotation. Yeah, if they're just. Hopefully they have to respect Swords of Plowshares at least a little bit. Though maybe they don't. I don't know. Maybe they're going to lose the game if they don't go for it. Alright, they tap their elf. We're good. I was only worried about actual crop rotation. The elf uses too much mana. They're not going to be able to Merit Lage this turn. And that lets me have Knight available to fetch Caracas or Wasteland as needed. And we can just keep them off of that from there. And then in the end step, I do want to activate my... Reclaimer and sack my basic planes. I can just play it out of the graveyard next turn, doesn't matter. Is it time to start going for Wasteland? I don't think so. I or I'm out of planes to search for, so Flagstones doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, it's Wasteland time. We are both under five minutes on the clock. Just gotta keep an eye on that. Okay. Top. Top. Play the planes out of my graveyard. One, two, three, four. Get another knight. And my job is to just turtle up here and then win in one giant attack, I think. I have access to multiple wastelands right now. Bajuka Bog. I can copy depths. If they're doing their thing here. I'm about 20 seconds ahead on the clock. As long as I keep that. I should be okay. Played their flagstones from hand. Zenith for one. Okay, so they are setting up. Okay, that's not the Merit Lage, or the Safekeeper I was expecting. They're wasting my waste. Alright, I mean, I can, I can live in this world if you want to commit to it. They get to rotate in response and save their land. Well, they don't save it, they just replace it with something else. That was kind of a weird play against someone with Ramanap Excavator in play. Unless they're getting the bog. But I have Knight also. 
Okay, so I want to activate elf in my end step and get another wasteland. And I want to activate knight in my end step and get bajuka bog, I think. Or do I just get another wasteland and then bog all their shit? I think I want to bog now and just make their creatures smaller and then start attacking. But wasting them after I bog them is kind of stupid. Okay. That was suboptimal, it's safe to say. I right, put on top and put on top. As much as I would like that card, I don't think I actually get it. And then these are five fives and a three four. What happens if I just attack them with everything? All right, a chump block is extremely welcome. And then I get to green, black. Get another knight. There is a time for knight of autumn, actually. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Yeah, I think taking them off options here. Like I'm already beating down wasteland. Wasteland. Right. That might have been aggressive, but I think I can afford to be aggressive. I, I'm not dead to Sejiri step. This endurance is pretty good here. Knight has a 5-5, five, five, minor 7s. I think I can win this game in 2 minutes. Uh, yep. Top. Top. Wasteland. Waste you. Knight. Green, white, blue. Always go Bant if you have the choice. Just because Bant is great. And bashing. Okay, I think we got it. And two minutes is plenty of time to click through this. That was intense. That was so intense. Sorry if my commentary was dry. I just sort of like blacked out and got in the zone. And like between the clock and the intensity of the strategic decisions in that matchup, like wow. That was great. We lost game one, made some mistakes that someone more familiar with the matchup wouldn't have made, but I think we played game two and three really well. I also think sniffing out the cut dark depths in the post board games line was pretty heads up too. So that was great. On to the next round. You're getting your money's worth already. I'm on the play in round number two, and I don't think this hand does what I need out of a hand. Like, can you just mulligan hands like this? It doesn't accelerate, doesn't draw cards. Yeah, I don't think you can keep a hand in Legacy that doesn't do anything until turn three. This one I can keep. I'm going to bottom one of the Yavamayas, I guess. And then, like, my plan here is to have a kind of quick Merit Lage. So I, I have access to the crop rotation. I have the Evamai to speed it up. I don't have stage or depths. I need one or the other. Like so. Uh, if I had led on Yavamaya, I could depths this turn. But unfortunately, I cannot. Yeah, maybe I'm just supposed to always plan for a turn two. Like plan to draw exactly what I need. We're playing against this combo deck of some variety. Or someone who's just aggressive with their brainstorms, but it's more likely Doomsday. If they go for Doomsday right now, maybe there's a chance I can waste them. I can also crop rotation for Bog if they're ad nauseum tendrils. There's the Dark Ritual. Okay, Doomsday confirmed. What do I do against Doomsday? This matchup is probably a nightmare. Lands I can search for include... I could get Wasteland and just try to waste them twice. Post board, I get Endurance, which can mess up a Thassa's Oracle trigger. If they have a counter spell and they know to counter my crop rotation, I probably lose. Oh, am I dead right now? Okay. Doesn't seem like it. I'm going to crop rotation. Bluster Storm. So if I just wait till my turn, I can win, but now I lose. That's a feel bad. Bummer. I'm going to fetch Dryad Arbor because it can attack. And their life total is low right now. Okay, so grab Dryad Arbor. I guess that might play into like a main deck Fatal Push, but I don't think that's a thing they have. 
Wasteland. Hope their pile didn't plan for that, but it probably did. Uh, they had the edge. Yeah, okay. If I just play around Flusterstorm, which I think is a reasonable thing not to know about in the main deck, I don't know. Let's see how this Doomsday Pile goes out. There's a chance that they have Lion's Eye Diamond in the pile and they just have enough mana to do everything they want, even without a single land. All right, they did put a land, a, both a fetch land and a fetchable land in the pile. I think they're a mana short if I wasteland like I plan to. Also, they didn't play around Source of Plowshares there. I don't know if that means they couldn't or they just didn't. Their hand could be Street Wraith and they did play around Source of Plowshares. Yeah, Flusterstorm, huh? All right, fine. Post board against Doomsday. Endurance comes in. Does Galactique do anything? It turns off Force of Will, but that's it. So no, I don't think it does anything. Definitely Silence isn't like great against Doomsday, but it's certainly not bad. I'm bringing it in. Uh, Collector Oof can turn off their petals and LEDs. Choke can slow them down if I get it in before I'm dead. I don't think Rest in Peace matters. I don't think Prismatic Ending matters. So I'm going to cut the endings. Plow could matter, but they're so good at making piles that I don't think Plow is really where I need to be here. Let's go to zero Plows, and I can cut Sylvan Safekeeper probably. Or Knight of Autumn might be worse than Safekeeper. Does Force of Vigor matter? I don't think so. Glacial Chasm doesn't matter. Field of the Dead is not the win con. Okay, here's my deck. This matchup feels real bad. On the play, I have Endurance but and Deafening Silence, but no mana. Gotta ship this. Okay, well, turn one Endurance action. I am going to keep this hand. Do I bottom one of the Mox Diamonds? Or one of the lands. And I think it's one of the diamonds. And I can play Depths and Diamond. I guess playing Depths doesn't make any fucking sense. I was still thinking about last game where I already had Yavamaya and like, haha, play to draw it on turn two. But leading on Depths doesn't make any sense. If they just like thought to use my Endurance here, the game is basically over. Okay, Ponder. Now I'm not holding up turn 2 Endurance when I could have. I need to draw Yavamaya to pay that off. Yeah, that was just a straight-up brain malfunction. When it did not shuffle their deck. Wow, I wish I could cast Choke right now. Too bad I'm a dummy. Okay. At least I have a green card to go with Endurance now. Though, wow, I wish I could have cast Choke there. Just complete malfunction of the brain. Reardane, okay. They appear to still be sculpting at least a little bit. That doesn't mean they're not going to Dark Ritual Doomsday right now. I would love to draw a green card. Nice. Okay, I drew a green card. That means I can cast this choke right now and still pitch to Endurance if I need to. Just playing a whole turn behind the curve. Don't worry about it. I believe there is a basic swamp in the Doomsday list. There is indeed. Here is the Doomsday. Well, Endurance is pretty good against Doomsday. And they have to do it without these two islands. I think drawing a land to let me play around days would be pretty great. Or a green card that lets me cast Ramanap Excavator and make my land drop and still be representing Endurance. The Wasteland doesn't matter. They probably can't beat a Collector Roof here. So Zenith is a good draw. Doomsday has resolved. They've made their choices. All right, deck, how about a relevant card? Yes, that is exactly the relevant card I was asking for. If they counter this, then i that's a counter they don't have for Endurance. And if they don't counter this, I don't think they can reasonably win through Collector Roof. Oof. Let's collect some oofs. They're still taking their draw step. I wonder if they set up a super slow, just like... Three lands, Street Wraith, Oracle. Oh, it just keeps getting nastier. I'll keep taking it. If I end up losing this game, then the matchup is unwinnable. Though I did time walk myself, so we can't fully commit to the 
complaint equity. Okay. Fatal push. Okay. That was smart. That was a good inclusion. Fetching. Okay, good. They've committed their spell for the turn, so they're not going to be able to fight over endurance. Unless they have two oracles. Okay, now I can play around days. Not that I expect days out of them. Yeah, if they just like cast Oracle and have Force of Will in their hand, I lose through all of this. Okay, Oracle's on the stack. I mean, they could definitely win here. Incredible. Doomsday is so good. I did, like, I did have the time walk. Like, I did waste an entire turn. Maybe with one turn more of development, I win this game instead. But jeez. Doomsday is so fucked up. Just... That was all of my cyber cards. I drew them all. Just played a whole turn behind curve. There was a turn of development with the preordain that I didn't need to give them. Could have choked them a turn earlier. Could have got Ram and Ep Excavator in the play and start gaining value. Uh, that That's the two life. Like, yeah, I threw that game away. Though Doomsday, the fact that they can beat this is just bonkers. GG's though, opponent played really well. We're about halfway through the video, so let me just remind you that if you like this deck and you want to try it out, you can use the code Boston Roll to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com, and you can play any deck anytime with cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. These links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I just realized that in that Doomsday match, the just now, when they played the Lotus Petal as their spell for the turn, they were at three. I could have just played Endurance in the end step and attacked them to dead. I got Tunnel Vision on their combo and forgot about my proactive plan, and I definitely just threw that one away. Even with time walking myself with the Dark Depths, just got really just booty blind to trying to stop their thing, do the sexy thing with like tuck their deck with Endurance in response to their combo when I could have just won the game. So 100% on me. I own it. Now to this match. I'm on the draw, and my opponent has mulliganed already. This can Zenith on turn one. Oh, no, it can't, because I only have one land. So this is not a key. Mox Diamond is not Mox Emerald. Not even close. This hand is questionable, but close. Like, any green... Like, Mox Diamond's insane. Any green source gets me off the ground here. I'm actually going to keep this in bottom of Sejiri step. This deck plays a lot of lands. I have a lot of green sources I can draw too. I think there's like 28 lands plus the... 29 lands plus the Moxin. More than half my deck is... Oh god. Are we losing to Doomsday again? Thoughtseize. Okay. So I'm probably going to... Well, I guess Zenith and Library are pretty comparable here. It is fortunate for them that they fetched Basic Swamp. They took Knight. Interesting. Is this a Pox deck? Oh, it's just Reanimator. We're getting turn one by Reanimator with our, our green white fair deck. Fun. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Just turn one Grizzlebrand. Maybe I'll draw Caracas and it'll be okay. Entombing another thing. Maybe they'll cast another reanimate and blow it. Drac is off the top. Uh, not quite. I guess I will play my flagstones and pass the turn. That is halfway to a Caracas. I just need a red source to go or a green source to cast it. <laughs> I'm getting unmasked now. All right. Yeah, I mean they drew seven. I'm not complaining. This game was lost on turn one. Ooh, they took library instead of crop rotation. So they're animating the Archon, which makes me discard a card. I guess it's the jury step. The Grizzlebrand gets to rumble, yet yeah, I don't actually. Well, I guess I could draw Caracas and Swords to Plowshares over the next two turns. It's still not enough. That's not even good enough. I should concede this game. I'm going to let my opponent show off for a while, though. Go ahead. Have some fun. All right, they evoked this grief. So they have grief in their deck. Good to know. All right, cool. Just completely hellbent, facing down a million. Power and toughness. 
They have Unmask and Grief. That's aggressive. What happens in this sideboard? Endurance happens. Rest in peace. Deafening silence. All happen. Collector Oof is probably in. We saw Lotus Petal as part of their plan. I don't think I'm going to need Sylvan Safekeeper. Just having a bigger creature faster than them could be part of the plan. Prismatic Ending, I think, is just worse than Swords to Plowshares. I can Ending in an Animate Dead, but I could also just plow the creature it's on. If that is in the cards. Glacial Chasm. I think I do want Glacial Chasm. Just being able to crop rotation for that and buy a bunch of time is valuable. I'm running out of things to cut, and... Okay, I think Knight of Autumn's gotta go. And Knight of the Reliquary is good. Sylvan Library is fine, but slow. Yeah, I think maybe I have to cut... To cut some number of plows, probably. Like, there's a good chance not having Force of Will in my deck, or... Surgical Extraction, or really anything, on turn one, uh, other than Endurance especially on the draw, that I will have to answer a creature once it's in play at some point in this match. But I'll say I'll bring in more plows for game three, probably three plows for game three, but I'm on the play this game. Do I get the first move? Force of Vigor could also hit Animate Deads. That's another zero. That's something I'll consider when I'm on the draw. But on the play, I think I want to lean on my sideboard hate cards. Okay, I'm going to keep this. Oh no, I just realized that Bajuka Bog is in my hand and I can't crop rotate for Bajuka Bog. Alright, I could still crop rotate for Caracas and the Bog is there. The turn 2 rip is there. Oh god, but both of these lands tap for, or come into play tapped. I, the turn 2 rip is not there. Jeez. But against the Unmask and Grief deck, I don't think I would get to turn 2 with the rip anyway. Yeah, oh, that sucks. Yeah, this hand looks really good for a second. I got so excited, I just like snap kept it. But once you actually dig into what this hand is doing, it's not good. Like, it's good if this is any land other than Bajuka Bog. It's good if this land comes into play untapped. It's just, just, it's just a little bit wrong in every direction. I can Sejiri step, leave the shields down, and just hope they don't turn one me. I could also Windswept Teeth and leave up Caracas or Swords to Plowshares, and I think that has to be the play. Even though it takes me off the turn to rest in peace, which is a shame. Unmasked, target me, okay. Wow, they're playing Unmarked Grave on top of Entomb. This is a really turbo-y kind of version. They took their rest in peace. Not a surprise. And pass the turn. I'm not going to fetch. Ooh. Well, still got to wait. Still have to leave up Plow or Caracas, just in case. But this hand is starting to get more and more get closer to playable. Okay, here's Entomb. They put Grizzlebrand in the bin. Dark Ritual. Exhum. Going to fetch in response. I'll just get Savannah. Then their thing resolves. I don't think they're going to have counter spells. I'm just going to plow this right now. Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to do that because they have the Archon thing. And maybe I'm supposed to get the crop rotation. But I didn't really want to put Caracas into their. or Grizzlebrand back into their hand with Caracas. But drawing 14. Yeah, this. Land coming into play tapped is going to cost me this game. I should have looked at this hand closer before I kept it. Got so excited. All the cards look so good, but they're really... They just lined up really poorly. And maybe I'm supposed to just Deafening Silence, let them have Grizzlebrand, let them draw cards, but they can't play cards anyway. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to Deafening Silence there. Yeah, despite only making like two decisions this game, I've made both of them wrong. Incredible. I hope you all at home are learning from my mistakes here. Can you tell that I'm not used to playing against combo with non-blue decks? What are all you people doing out there without Force of Will in your deck? You're crazy. That said, both of these rounds were winnable, if I just played them correctly. But here's a grief. They take my Deafening Silence. 
let's find out if they are a tendrils deck also or if i'm just gonna have to beat a couple of griefs in play here the unmarked grave for grief is weird like that's pretty suspicious they could have got the archon and they just got a grief instead so archon must already be in the hand yeah okay they just unmask themselves oh taking a different archon in their hand is exhum and animate dead they get to take out my green source well i'll bog you this does exile target permanent if i draw thespian stage in the next two turns there might still be a game here but they can thought seize themselves and animate the archon so there's not even a game here after that yeah okay i needed to cast deafening silence and just trust the deafening silence to get me to the next turn where i have untapped mana to do stuff yeah all right i'm dead can't win this game anymore should have looked closer at the opening hand should have thought more about what they're actually capable of like i was right in my level one thinking of deafening silence doesn't stop in tomb reanimate to get grizzlebrand into play but the next order consequences of that are sure they have grizzlebrand draw 14 you can't cast any more spells my turn plow grizzlebrand that is what i should have been thinking about and i just didn't all right please learn from my mistakes after masterfully navigating a fair matchup and then punching two combo matchups, we're on the draw in round four, hoping it's a fair matchup. And I don't know if I'm supposed to keep hands like this, but I'm going to. It has the depth, which is halfway there. I can Zenith for an elf or for Dried Arbor if I want to come out even faster. A snow covered island. All right. Tell me more and a ponder they did not shuffle their ponder come on mox diamond backup depths just what i needed okay do i zenith for the arbor or do i zenith next turn for elf and i think i zenith next turn for elf by the way if you're a green white depths expert and i'm not supposed to keep hands like this please let me know in the comments I am certainly open to constructive criticism. Oh, okay. We're just getting shown and told about stuff. Okay. Uh, I will put in my flagstones and hopefully draw crop rotation or Caracas. I guess I should fetch for scrub or Savannah just to maximize my draws here. Slight thinning. Oh, look who's decided to show up. It's a little late. There are no plays here. I'm dead. Okay, yeah, if I just have Knight of the Reliquary in my opening hand, I win. Because I put in Knight, untap, sack a land, get Caracas. All right. The third combo deck in a row. Good, good. Choke is good. Do I like Deafening Silence in this matchup? It's a lot worse than it was in the previous matchup. But I think it is still worth doing. I like get slows down cantripping and sculpting and turns off omniscience. Force of Vigor also is pretty good against omniscience. Prismatic Ending basically does nothing in the matchup. Bajuka Bog does not work in this matchup, doesn't do anything important. Swords to Plowshares also not great in the matchup. It can get a Grizzlebrand, kinda, but that's not really what you want to be planning for don't think i'm going to need safekeeper this is a win or lose kind of matchup gadok teague okay teague turns off sneak attack and if they have an omniscience combo line it can slow it down maybe i don't know the choke's good library's good knight's good ramanap is always good crop rotation's great all right i'm cutting another plow for this Let's do this thing. Okay, I have a crop rotation and a zenith and something to do on turn one. Let's go. Opponent mold to five over there. I'm gonna fetch for basic forest. Sneak and show is also sometimes a blood moon deck and I just wanna make sure I have checked that box where I can. Okay, well, turn one something. 
Ooh, they've given me a chance to force a vigor their lotus petal. I don't think I'm gonna take it though. I think I just passed the turn. Yeah, I could Zenith for Arbor. To start playing ahead though, if if they have Pyroclasm, which is definitely a card that this deck plays sometimes, I lose. Show and tell, huh? Okay, well, let's take a look at my deck. See if there's anything helpful here. I could crop rotate in response. But I don't think that matters. Oh, uh, maybe I'm just supposed to crop rotate for wasteland on my turn. Yeah, I'm willing to believe that. Okay. I'm gonna put in Dark Depths. I get Grizzle Brand. I draw a bunch of cards. They would have to reload and go a second round. Because I can just spin for a Caracas off of this Reclaimer. Alright, there's more. Okay, we're also just getting Emrakul sneak attack right now. Okay, that's a Ponder. So the sneak attack is off for now. Alright, oh, Magus of the Moon. Great. Confirmed. Blood Moon in the deck. What do I do about this? I guess I have to uh, rotate my Dark Depths into Basic Planes and hope to draw my one of Swords of Plowshares. So I guess I had to try for the crop rotation there. But yeah, th this just went poorly. They sidestepped everything I was doing really well. I had to crop rotation for Wasteland on my turn, I think, and just try to screw them. And this is, of course, Magus the Moon. It's not even Blood Moon. Blood Moon I would actually have covered, but instead I just have nothing. Well, folks, make sure to practice your combo matchups if you're going to register green-white depths. That's my PSA from today. Mazabeth, aka Mountain. Cool. Here's my Mountain. And I guess I can cast a Zenith. They can't daze it. Who is helpful here? A Knight, not really. Ramanap, not really. Nothing is helpful, but Knight is at least a 5-5 five, five. that is big enough to attack. Like if they attack with Grizzlebrand, they go to 11. Or are we just getting sneak attacked right now? Nope. Okay. All right, Grizzle's getting in. Oh, fearlessly drawing 7. Okay. This choke is embarrassing. They haven't played an island the entire match. This is just a mountain right now. They do appear to be slightly color screwed using lotus petals on their ponders. Another. They couldn't beat the first one. How about you settle down? So they discard some cards here. They are an omniscience build also. Flagstones, normally an exciting card. Today, not an exciting card. So they do have to block with at least one of these moons. Oh, they blocked with both. Cool. That unlocks my Maze of Ith. I'm gonna cast Choke. See if they want to fight over this. Of course, pitching Omniscience. All right, crop rotation. Sack the flagstones. Use this ability. Wow, no second force. I'm kind of disappointed. Okay, here's Caracas. What just happened? <laughs> what? How are we here? I haven't won this game yet, but Mazavith checks the Grizzle Brand. They can't draw seven. Caracas can check an Emrakul. I did use up all my green cards, so I don't get to wipe out a sneak attack, unfortunately. All right, now they can't tap Ancient Tomb anymore. Okay, there's Sneak Attack. Okay, here's Emrakul. We begin combat. If they have Simeon Spirit Guide, they can still attack. Like if they just put it back in right now. All right. So you're dead? What? How, how are we here? <laughs> I mean, I'll take a W where I can get it, but I feel like my opponent put this one directly in the trash can somehow. All right, Grizzlebrand, also a legend. See you later. And then attack for nine. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Sure. You got it. We're playing against a deck with two Magus of the Moons in it. It seems like my Swords of Plowshare should come back in. At least a few of them. And maybe the choke isn't what I'm looking for. Like, I think I... Between... I think if my mana functions, that's good news. So... Alright, three plows in, plus all my other stuff. Here we go. Just waving my hands around in the air. Whee! Okay. Game three, on the draw. I have the knight, which is one of the best cards. I am actually going to keep this. Because if they show and tell, and I put in knight, I can get Caracas. If they omniscience me, I'm dead. But I can't really play around omniscience. So I won't. It's called Tarn Go. I'll take that. I'm going to play my Heath to get ahead of Blood Moon where I can. Fetching in my end step. Are we going to see a Brainstorm here? Trying to set up combo. Nope, just fetching. There's the Brainstorm. I am not going to crack this Windswept Heath. Because if I draw Forest or Plains, I want to be able to fetch the other one. If I'm forced to make a choice, I will choose planes. But if I'm not, I will just draw a card. Another knight. Okay. Here's Yavamaya. So now my planes also taps for green, at least until I get Blood Mooned. But if I don't get Blood Mooned, then it's just a savanna. I'd feel a lot better with this hand if I had Force of Vigor in it to fight over Omniscience. Touching in the end step, shuffle up that brainstorm, and cast another one. All right, they're pushing. That means their hand is close, and they're just pushing to go off this turn. What do we got? I'm gonna fetch for basic planes in response in case they try to juke me and put in Magus of the Moon. Put in Knight. Yeah, they have the omniscience. We're just dead. Let me check my crop rotation toolbox. I don't think I have a land that can meaningfully impact omniscience nope needed force of vigor in this hand passing the turn what what okay um is there a way i can push advantage with this crop rotation now that they're passing the turn i could rotate my yavamaya into thespian stage and just try to move this game towards actually winning okay that's fine Sucks, but it's fine. You all know what I mean. I can get the basic forest here. Do I think that attacking for 20 is more likely to win this game or getting a Dark Depths into play? Well, that's still attacking for 20, but I mean with knights. I think I should just pass holding up knight. It's crazy that they just went impulse go. Like, what the hell? Oh, now we're dead. Okay, sure, whatever. We had one turn there. They even wasted a Force of Will on a crop rotation when I could have drawn Force of Vigor, but now we just died Emrakul. Okay. And because they have Omniscience, even if I bounce the Emrakul with Caracas, they just replay it and yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I feel like we weren't supposed to get a Game 3 there anyway, but we did, and uh, got quickly dumpstered by it. Okay, final round coming. I'm on the play in the final round. Once again, the Dryad Arbor, the one Dryad Arbor, is in my opening hand with Green Sun Zenith. That's a lot of fun. I do have a turn two Sylvan Library. I'm going to keep this. Oh, good. <laughs> my opponent revealed Chancellor of the Annex. This has been a good league to try Green White for the first time. Okay, so... Things I can do include cast Sylvan Safekeeper and put it straight into the graveyard. That at least pops the Chancellor bubble. If they cast Exhum, I get a Sylvan Safekeeper. But they also know that they don't need to play around anything right now. They build a just like Faithless Looting Pass and I get to drop my Bajuka Bog. The, there's the Faithless Looting. That's the first part of my plan. They pass the whole turn just like that. Bojuka. Okay. Living on borrowed time, but I'll take it. 
Got an Ashen Rider, a Chancellor, and the back half of Faithless Looting. That was a high value Bajuka Bog. Just right out of the hand like that. Oh, didn't matter. Don't worry. I do have Swords of Plowshares now, so I can answer something. They get to draw a million cards off Grizzlebrand first, but at least I get to do something here. Oh, there's the Grizzlebrand. And there's the Reanimate. They only get to draw seven once, though, before I plow this thing. Should I wait until their end step? I think so. They're not going to have counter spells. If they unmask me, I can plow in response. But I don't want to let them reanimate again on this turn if I don't have to. Unmasking me. Okay, fine. Get rid of it. Okay, I'm probably going to lose my Zenith here. Though, library... Like, both of my cards are good, but Zenith could represent Scavenging Goose right now. Which is not a card that I have, but they don't necessarily know that. And library does involve me passing the turn for an entire turn cycle before I get any value out of it. They took the Zenith as predicted. Oh, they're taking both. All right, that's fair. I'm empty. Crop rotation. Shit. All right. Here's this creature. They did not entomb in the end step. Oh, are they passing the turn? And I drew a crop rotation. All right, things are starting to come up millhouse. Not that I've won by any means, and my bog already being in play is kind of unfortunate, but it did get me this far. And try to arbor. The, the little arbor who could. I think I'm supposed to just zenith for knight here. Take a turn off. Attacking. Make sure everything is locked up where it needs to be. Okay. Here's that. Okay, they're thought seizing themselves. Okay. That makes sense. Chancellor is the take. Okay. So I'm going to have to crop rotate here. Oh, they're reanimating my safekeeper. That's fun. I didn't even see that reanimate in the hand. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay, so they can reanimate my safekeeper. And then that protects their chancellor. So I have to crop rotation in response here. And I'm just going to beeline for Merit Lage. Oh, forest. Crop rotate this. Or... Oh, I should have sacked the... Damn, should have sacked the Dryad Arbor. That was a freebie. I just let it go. I'm going to get Thespian stage. Yeah, I, I just saw the anime dead in their hand and didn't even look at the stack. If I sack Dryad Arbor there, I just get it back for free. That was a, a spew. Oh, they've conceded from the game, though. They know what's coming. Okay. Cool. That was weird. Let's do this sideboard plan again. Just four combo decks in four rounds. Rest in peace. Collector oof. Endurance. I'm on the draw, so I do want Force of Vigor. I don't love it, but if I can clip an anime dead with it, I will take it. Prismatic Ending, not so good. Knight of Autumn, not so good. Don't care about Safekeeper, really. Not going to be a whole lot of time for Librarying. Going to cut two plows, but there's a chance I'll need to answer a creature in play. I think my lands have to stay in. As making a fast merit lage is a way that I can keep up with a grizzle brand, or at least neutralize it. I gotta cut one more card here. I don't think it's a mox because just being able to turn one rest in peace is one of the ways I can cheese the matchup. I'm bringing in rest in peace, so maybe I'm supposed to take out Ramanap Excavator. It is kind of slow and clunky. I can see games where it's important to the victory plan, but I can also see games where it doesn't do anything. Okay. This is what I'm doing. Well, I have Endurance in my hand. This is a keep. They did not reveal a Chancellor. That's good news. I'm... They griefed me pitching on Mask. Okay, so I'm going to lose my Endurance, I guess. Or, I don't have to. I could tuck their Grief so they can't reanimate it. But, I... Nah. I don't think that's worth two cards. At all. Battle. Please just have Entomb reanimate on top of all that. 
Dark Ritual. In Tomb. Oh yeah, they do. We got the whole shit. Grizzle Brand in the graveyard. And reanimate it. Cool. Good start. Opponents at five. Let's just draw crop rotation or Caracas, please. Still have their land drop to make. They did all that without making a land drop. Gross. Mox Diamond, huh? What does that do? Nothing yet. I think I should play the Reclaimer and just hold on to the Mox Diamond. Because they've seen the Knight. I kind of want to surprise them with what I'm capable of if I can. Like, that's a surprise card in the land in the graveyard and it's a surprise extra mana not that i think that's going to matter at this juncture but i do like it back up to 14 cards in hand with them no prismatic endings in this deck wow powerful stuff i'm just going to discard dumping five cards i'll take it okay they do have archetype of endurance that's kind of old technology but Still checks out. It gives all your creatures hexproof. Wow, that's a stacked graveyard. I don't play a scavenging ooze, unfortunately. I will jump my knight out here, though. And just pretend we're still playing magic. Maybe their seven cards in hand are all bricks, and so are the seven they're going to draw this turn also. Luckily, because we took game one, we're going to be on the play for game three. And hopefully get to avoid the worst of it. We get a chance to cast spells at least before Grizzlebrand's in play. Here it comes. Animate dead. Oh yeah, I'm already dead. Okay. I can't beat the Archon. It clears the night. I can't get the Caracas. There's not a way through all of that. So into game three we go. Does anything change? Is Night of Autumn good? I don't think so. But like... Maybe? I don't think it's better than Force of Vigor, which is this slot it's contending for. I could see an argument for Glacial Chasm, but I don't think that is a good argument. Again, that's playing to a board where they already have a monster, and I want to keep them from having monsters. Just give me a turn one rest in peace deck. It's been a long league. Pay me out. Okay, a hand that has five green cards, one tapped white land, a land that makes no mana at all, but it has endurance. I don't think I can keep this. I mean, this one is better, question mark? I'm going to tuck one of the Force of Vigors. And I can sort of plowshares their first monster. I can rip a land for rest in peace. If they go for an animate dead, I have the Force. I mean, it's ugly, but what i got it's full of sideboard cards the deck has 29 lands in it there's a grief i'm just gonna hit it i don't want them to be able to reanimate it here's my hand do they take rest in peace and plan for next turn or do they take force of vigor and just animate dead me right now took the rest in peace and come on land okay we're in something resembling business. Collector Oof can slow down multiple things. But Sylvan Library is the card that's going to actually win the game. Alright. Here's my library. Let's go. They had the answer to my rest in peace. They didn't entomb in the end step. Seems like they got something to play right now, though. They don't really need to entomb in the end step if they ever reanimate. Oh, they have Prismatic Ending. They did show me that last game. Oh, looting. They tapped white, then untapped their white and cast looting instead. Uh-oh, there's the petal. Am I punished? Archon of Cruelty. Oh, they made blue-white. That mana, yeah. Okay, that doesn't reanimate Archon. Reclaimer is better than oof, because if I untap one more time, I have bog up. Like, rotating flagstones into bog is just like the stone nutters. I just need to fade this turn. And I think if they could have brought back their Archon, they could have done it last turn. Dark Ritual, what? Hardcast Grief? Oh, okay. Looting out of the graveyard. Alright, just gotta fade actual reanimate. 
even a different reanimation spell is fine because they have one card in their hand and no additional mana. All right. We're getting a turn. Majuka Bog is up. Do I want to waste them or do I just want to have more of my own mana? If I waste them, if I don't waste them, I don't know. This is a close call. I'm not going to waste them. I think my mana is more important than theirs right now. Their important resource is different than mine. Oh my god, we did it. They packed it up. Uh, took a 1 and 3 off the chain of combo matchups, though. I have to be honest with myself and reflect that I just missed lethal in the Doomsday matchup after playing a land that doesn't tap for mana. So two giant mistakes in again in the Doomsday matchup in our game two. There would have been a game three, but that game two was mine to win, and I threw it away. And then did something different happen in the reanimator matchup? I forget. I yeah, I, oh yeah, the deafening silence. I took a turn off of Deafening Silence because I wasn't planning far enough ahead to really use my cards correctly. I also just snapped off the keep in game two because it was full of sideboard cards, not realizing that those sideboard cards all overlapped with each other in a way that was terrible. So mistakes were made in two of those three losses. I think the one fair matchup we got to play where we actually got to make a lot of decisions and play to the board, I think we played that pretty well. A lot of lessons there. And unfortunate, just... Didn't get to do more of that. Didn't get to play against a blue deck at all. And I mean, that's magic. It's a, it's a five match set. It's it's a crapshoot. Sometimes you don't play against a blue deck. But this is green white depths. It was more resilient than I thought. Like I, I will certainly. I don't think it will surprise anyone if I say that I am not super stoked that we just played four combo matchups in a row. That's not really the experience I wanted with this deck, but. I will say that for being a deck with green and white cards, like basic forest to basic planes are in this deck, there was a lot of game in all of those combo matchups. Like the round one against show and tell, or game one against show and tell, I drew Knight of the Reliquary the turn after they jam show and tell. Like if, I, it, if that's just in my hand instead, I win instead of lose. So there... And then, like I like I said, I made mistakes in the first reanimator round and in the doomsday round. And you just got to know what your role is in the matchup and keep an eye on what matters and really understand those matchups because you're not going to get a second chance. It's not like a blue deck where brainstorms come in to save you or you can just force of will, whatever. Like you have to make decisions on your turn, planning for what they might do on their turn. You don't get to wait and to see what they actually do and then cast your counterspell. Like, it's just a very different mentality, very different mindset you have to be in when you're playing decks like this. And this is not really my wheelhouse. I mean, I understand Magic, I understand Legacy, I've played against these decks enough, but when you're actually on the other side piloting, and when the chips are down, like, do or die, like, do I leave up Crop Rotation or play Deafening Silence right now with my one mana? You, you lose if you pick wrong, period. And I picked wrong, because uh, lack of... lack of experience... But the tools were there to make those games drag out. Sometimes we got dumpstered on the play by the combo decks, but we mostly didn't. There were back and forth things. There were opportunities to make decisions. You play best two out of three. So if they dumpster you one game, like, okay, whatever. Sideboard, shuffle up. Game two, let's go. The mirror was a lot of fun, just as a game of magic that was played. Just being able to see all of the chips that are down and... There aren't that many instants in the deck, and most of them you want to cast right away, like Swords to Plowshares and Prismatic Ending are spells in the deck, and Green Sun Zenith. Like, all of those spells, you generally want to cast when you draw them, because every piece of material that Ending or Plow would remove matters right away, and unless there's just not a target, obviously. But, like, normally if there's a Knight in play or a Reclaimer in play, you want to get rid of the thing now because the advantage will steamroll the longer it's in play. But... The only like card that really plays like a real instant is crop rotation. So if you can narrow down what you think they have, how many cards in their hand, can they make Merit Lage right now? What if they have crop rotation? What if they have two crop rotations? Like you can really narrow it down. And it becomes kind of like chess. And I I do like playing matchups like that. And I think we we got a good one out of that. That was like a 45 minute game one followed by four 15 minute rounds. <laughs> like half this video is just going to be round one. But that's okay. That was a great match. 
Thank you, Chris, for asking me to play this. It is a powerful deck. It's not really my style. I don't really like Maverick or Death and Taxes kind of decks. And this one is kind of closer to Maverick than it is to a combo deck. I have a lot of respect for the Black Green Depths deck. I think it's poorly positioned right now. But if you love Depths and you like fair magic and creatures and making tricksy plays, I think this deck is very good. It is genuinely good. It's just not really my style. So if you're into this, I recommend it. Check it out. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe the channel. If you want to sub support the channel more than just a subscription, Patreon and YouTube membership are available. You get some sweet perks and emotes and stuff. Wash and roll merch available. If you need cards, make sure to click my affiliate link. And to TCG player, then I get some of that money. Costs you nothing. Helps me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.